Death and life walk side by side, eternal companions. Our death shadow haunts our living steps. Mythology has captured aspects of the deeper mystery of this coexistence. Someone was put to death but resurrected. A transforming agent exists on the other side of the dark door. This story, Memory or Hope, travels through time, through oral traditions, written ones and imaged ones. Voyaging through history on the wings of technology till it reaches the age of mechanical reproduction. This age, our age, can multiply memory a hundred thousand times, plastering it on billboards in pairs, triplets and multiplets. Yet no two memories ever the same, thus pluralize the icon at the heart of the human. Initially, it dualizes the icon and out of the dramatic dialectic pluralizes it. The wood of the cross travels down to the wooden frames of posters, moldering through public misuse, abuse, reuse. Yet the sign of the icon in the virtual ubiquity of multiplication kindles itself everywhere. This is your initiating Greek Christian meditation. Christos, who is Logos made flesh, spirit all aura, whose story is his story, subjects itself to the death of mechanical reproduction and uses that as a means to rebirth its infinity. Flesh is the key word here. Flesh, the point of application of intensity and affect in the Christian mythos, grounding the human mind in an animal body and struggling with the unprincipled nature of the latter. This the Greeks could nuance since they knew the law and meaning of animal vitalism. Still, the residue remains, subjection to the iron law of matter, its refusal of life as an alien principle. The corpse, but hiding within it Corpus Christi, miracle of the flesh and blood of the spirit, Eucharist, which dwells at the pluralized center, the being of the Mandelbrot set becoming, and its every becoming. In other words, at the center of this mental, vital, material flesh is the golden and luminous heart of Christ. But the materiality of flesh implies limits and forecloses possibilities of experience and transformation above the human mental and below the animal vital. The transmortification, transubstantiation, transfiguration of flesh is human divinity. There are post-human divinities that the human has imagined, intuited, experienced. But your work restricts itself to the range of flesh, a self-restriction, also a strength. Shifting from this mythos, you searched for alternatives in your prenatal imaginary. If doors functioned as frames for crucifix posters, liminal functionaries, doors of perception which can both close over in death and open to life. Now you sought to frame a falling Icarus, hands or wings extended by twin doors. A visual transition from Christ to Icarus, both tragic figures. One an excess of abject surrender, the other excess of hubris. Once more, a doubled crucifix. Crucifix is Christos, say the Christians, but the pre-Christian Greeks say it's kesto, chest, box, stable enclosure, space for manifestation, or kestos, girdle, enclosing the womb of the cosmos. This the transition from the no of the cross to the zero of the mother's womb, within which the cross perpetually repeats, the never-repeated death-rebirth of the ever-same different and eternal time image. So you tried to depict the falling Icarus, but the flesh refused to be tamed, 
swelling in curves and sprouting breasts and with her soft feminine arms throwing open the doors to life. From Christ to Icarus you opened the doors to ancient goddess cults. The Nietzschean will to power to awaken the wounds of existence exist. This is the theory of tragedy, representation of the human condition, in which Apollo and Dionysus, patron gods of the Stoics and the Gnostics, both lay claim to the human soul. Through their churning, the evolutionary force of flame is kindled in the heart. Your gender-changed Icarus expressed such an evolutionary moment of freedom of becoming, partaking the crack of improbability, contemple, and then flinging jubilantly wide your ever-present door. The pink-red background, the female musculature, protrusions and orifices, and outstretched arms like wings clipped and framed by the doors convey her explosive internal pressure. The natural holes of her body are vent holes of knowledge vapors and penetralia to mystery and bliss, while memorializing punctured stigmata, the wounds of existence. Your next explorations push the creative force further towards chaos. Multiplying the figures and opening the chasm or abyssum of the gaping wound at the center of the multiform being. Living above a meatpacking factory in meatpacking New York, you studied the physical vitalism of animal body parts. These you took for your models, crowding wholesale raw cuts into the semblance of the human. In a way, in these, the flayed body of Marcius was already born. The hubris of the satyr bearing the resentment of the gods. This finally emerged in the 90s, the tame PCC decade when expressionism gave way to scrupulous canonical modeling and Marcius took shape not in agony but in sensuous physical hero. Later, there was the realist, luminous heart of Christ. And in the 2010s, there are the roses. Clots soaked in blood, vaginal flesh, red intestines, wounds of Christ, the internal, external heart of Christ, exuding drops of blood and tears, the blood of the martyred and the blood of the murdered, precious as rubies and crystals of heaven, magical substances, dualities, wounds of existence.